Buenos días. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, shareholders. We thank you for attending this ordinary general shareholders meeting of Ferrovial remotely held at second call as uh, yesterday sufficient quorum was not reached so that it could be validly constituted on first call. Due to the declaration of the state of alarm on March 14th, due to the health crisis derived from the expansion in Spain of COVID-19, this meeting will be held under different conditions than usual. In these exceptional circumstances, the Board of Directors has decided to maintain the call for the general shareholders meeting so that the company can continue to carry out its activities with the least possible disruption. The holding of the meeting on the scheduled date must be reconciled with safeguarding the general interests and the health of our shareholders and of all the people involved in the organization and the holding of this meeting and therefore the board of directors in accordance with the regulations approved to deal with this situation has decided to hold the general shareholders meeting uh, exclusively for remote attendance and participation it has also agreed to extend the means available to shareholders to exercise their participation rights remotely as described in the supplementary announcement to the call which was duly published the meeting is being held without anyone present in person except for the presiding board of the meeting composed of the chairman and the secretary of the board of directors the chief executive officer and the chairman of the audit and control committee whilst maintaining all the necessary safety and distancing measures the other members of the board are attending remotely, Mrs. Maria del Pino y Calvo Sotelo, Mr. Santiago Fernández Valbuena, Mr. Jose Fernández Sánchez Junco, Mr. Joaquín del Pino y Calvo Sotelo, Mr. Philip Bauman, and Mrs. Hannah Sorensen, Mr. Bruno Di Leo, Mr. Juan Ollos Martínez de Irujo, and Mr. Gonzalo Urquijo Fernández de Araoz. At the board's request, the Madrid notary, Mr. Javier Navarro Rubio Serres, is also present to take the minutes of the meeting. I will now give the floor to the Secretary of the Board and of this general meeting, Mr. Santiago Ortiz Valmonde, who will read the call of the meeting and its supplementary announcement. Good morning. The notices for the call of this annual general shareholders meeting have been published pursuant to Article 27 of the bylaws and 516 of the Capital Companies Act on the website of the Spanish Securities Market Commission on February 27, 2020, on Ferrovial's website on March 4, 2020, and in the daily newspapers ABC, El Mundo, La Razón, El País, Expansión, Cinco Días, and El Economista on March 4, 2020. Following the declaration of the state of alarm by Royal Decree 463-2020 and the publication of Royal Decree Act 8-2020 on March 17th, an extraordinary urgent measures to deal with the economic and social impact of COVID-19, the Board of Directors agreed to hold this meeting exclusively by telematic means and to extend the means for remote participation of shareholders. In accordance with the latter rule, a supplementary announcement to the call has been published on the website of the Spanish Securities Market Commission on March 30th, 2020, on Ferrovial's website on the same day, and in the official Gazette of the Mercantile Registry on April 1st, 2020. Given the length of the text of the call and the supplementary announcement, and in accordance with Article 19.3 of the Regulations of the General Shareholders Meeting, its content is summarized. The call includes the agendas, possible supplement, the electronic forum for shareholders, the right to information, listing all the documents available to shareholders, the right to attend, representation, remote attendance, and representation and voting using remote communication means containing the rules on the exercise of these rights and on personal data protection. Supplementary announcement indicates that the meeting will be held on the same date and at the same time as foreseen in the call that it will be held exclusively by remote means, that the call already takes into account the means of remote participation as required by Article 41 of the aforementioned Royal Decree 8 slash 2020 to hold a shareholders meeting remotely and describes the additional mechanisms that have exceptionally been made available to shareholders to facilitate the exercise of their remote participation rights. 
The general shareholders meeting is understood to be held in the registered office located at Principe de Vergara 135 in Madrid in accordance with the provisions of Article 41 of the Royal Decree Act 8 2020 mentioned above and as indicated in the published complementary announcement. If any problem were to arise in the electronic communication systems and services, the general shareholders meeting would be suspended for the time necessary to remedy it and would resume as soon as possible whilst reporting it on Ferrovial's corporate website. We will now summarize the agenda. Matters for approval. Examination and approval as appropriate of the individual and consolidated financial statements and management report of Ferrovial SA for the year ending December 31st, 2019. Application of the profit or loss of the financial year 2019. Three examination and approval were appropriate of the management carried out by the Board of Directors in financial year 2019. Fourth, appointment of the company's external auditors and its consolidated group. Five, re-election ratification and appointment of directors. Sixth, increase of share capital by a determinable amount by issuing new ordinary shares of 20 cents nominal value each charged to reserves. Seven, second capital increase for a determinable amount under the terms of the former. Eighth, approval of a share capital reduction through the amortization of a maximum of 27,755,960 Treasury shares. Ninth, approval of the director's remuneration policy. Tenth, approval of a share-based remuneration system for board members performing executive duties. Eleventh, authorization to continue with the divestment of the services division of the Ferrovial Group. Twelfth, delegation of powers to the board of directors, executive committee, chairman, and chief executive officer for the execution and implementation of the agreements adopted by this general shareholders meeting. Ele uh, two, matters for consultative vote. Thirteenth, annual reports on directors' remuneration. Three, matters for information. Fourteenth, information of the, on the amendments introduced in the regulations of the Board of Directors. That's uh, the summary of the agenda. No use has been made of the rights that the law grants shareholders to request a, the publication of a supplement to the call or to propose reasoned proposals regarding matters already included in the agenda. Since the publication of the call, Shareholders and the terms defined in the Capital Companies Act have been able to consult the documents that will be reviewed by this general meeting at the registered office or request that it be sent at no cost. And the company has continuously published on its website all the information that Section 518 of the Capital Companies Act refers to. We will now give you the final list of attendance to this general shareholders meeting. There are 123 shareholders present, holders of 127,152,323 shares, which is 17.295% of our share capital. This number includes shareholders that have voted remotely. And there are 1,590 shareholders represented, owning 394,617,884 shares, which is 53.674% of the share capital. Therefore, attending amongst those present or represented, we have shares adding up to 70.968% of the total share capital subscribed and paid up. Sufficient quorum for the valid constitution of the general shareholders meeting on second call. Considering the definitive attendance quorum, the Secretary has just quoted, the meeting is declared to be validly constituted on second call to deliberate and decide on all items and matters on the agenda. I will now give the floor to the notary. Pursuant to Article 101 of the regulations of the Mercantile Registry, as notary of the meeting, I hereby warn the Assembly that if any person attending telematically wishes to express any reservation or protest regarding the statements made by the chairman and the secretary on the number of shareholders attending and the capital present and represented, they may do so by sending from this moment and until the end of the meeting an email to the address accionistas at ferrovial.com indicated in the call 
or to the email javier at notarianavarrorubio.com. If there are any, they will be recorded in the minutes of the meeting. For proper identification, such an email must necessarily be sent by the shareholder from the email address indicated when registering on the platform that has been made available to you. A continuación. Next, I would like to say a few words. On behalf of the Board of Directors and on my own behalf, I would like to thank you for attending remotely and to welcome you to this general meeting of Ferrovial shareholders. It's the first time we are celebrating this meeting without the physical presence of our shareholders due to COVID-19. Therefore, I'd like to convey my condolences to those who have lost a loved one due to the pandemic and my thoughts and encouragement to all Ferrovial workers, shareholders and other stakeholders who have uh, suffered from the disease or have managed to overcome it. I'll begin by describing uh, the key events in 2019. We entered 2019 with an overall net profit of 268 million euros, with revenues from continuing activities amounting to 6,054 million euros. This result was uh, supported by the good operating performance uh, of our main infrastructure assets last year. We received a uh, 729 million euros in dividends uh, from affiliates, um, notably from uh, toll roads, uh, where the 407 ETR contributed with 309 million euros, uh, as well uh, as the 166 million euros. That's the very first uh, dividends that we, we have received from managed lane projects. Uh, Heathrow was also an important source of revenues as it distributed to Ferrovial the equivalent uh, of 145 million euros. Moreover, Ferrovial enjoys a good financial position. We closed uh, 2019 uh, with a net cash figure which was 32% higher than the previous year. 2019 was also the year of the launch of the Horizon 24 plan. The main objectives of that plan will be detailed later and the implementation of that plan will be steered by our new CEO, Ignacio Madedejos, who is attending his first Ferrovial shareholders meeting. With this plan, Ferrovial is focusing on the development, construction and management of sustainable infrastructure assets with high concession values, which will enable us to maximise shareholder value. I would also like to highlight our commitment in the face of the challenges posed by climate change. We have reduced our emissions by 5.2% uh, with respect to 2018. And that is uh, a saving of, of almost 50,000 equivalent uh, tonnes of CO2. And we will continue to work on new initiatives in this area. In the field of corporate governance, uh, we have continued uh, to uh, make new appointments to the board. Uh, Two independent uh, directors uh, have joined us through co-option, Juan Hoyos and Gonzalo Ruquijo. I'd like to welcome them to their very first shareholders meeting. This appointment will be uh, put to you for a vote later for ratification. Oscar Van Hul has also been appointed the vice chair of the board. In this meeting, you will also be asked to vote on continuing the divestment of the services division the first steps have already been taken with the sale of broad spectrum in Australia and New Zealand. We remain committed to divesting the whole services division, although the current situation in the markets may cause some delays. The company's good operation performance and the prospects of sustained growth going forward enable us to propose shareholder remuneration that could potentially amount to 550 million euros. If that proposal is approved, uh, the timing and the size of the distribution will be determined by the Board of Directors, depending on how COVID-19 impacts the business. And I will, go, uh, I will talk to you about this again a little later. As I noted earlier, COVID-19 is having a massive impact on Ferryville's activity. 
and business from the outset. Ferrivial has focused its strategy on three pillars. Firstly, safeguarding the health of our employees and our users. Secondly, keeping the business running and assuring the company's future. And especially, reinforcing our liquidity. The third pillar is to maintain our social commitment in the most urgent uh, spheres. Everywhere where we are located, flexible working arrangements have been adopted, along with teleworking uh, and a freeze on business trips and face-to-face -face meetings. And proper protective equipment has been provided to all the workers who need it to do their jobs. Uh, following the recommendations issued by the WHO and the health authorities. I would like to pay tribute here to the work of all of our employees who have done everything in their power to keep the business running smoothly within the logical constraints of mandatory confinement decreed in Spain and equivalent measures uh, that uh, have uh, been uh, put in place in other geographies regarding social commitment. We've set up a fund, the Ferrovial Juntas COVID-19 fund, which will be endowed by Ferrovial with up to 10 million euros to fund the fight against the pandemic in various fields and also to uh, help relieve the uh, subsequent socio-economic effects. The fund is open to third parties uh, for them to collaborate in the fund and Ferrovial will commit up to the maximum amount mentioned to I encourage all of you to participate. As part of the measures that we have adopted in response to the COVID-19 crisis, I can announce today that the board has agreed to a 20% reduction in the fixed remuneration for the uh, executive chairman and the chief executive officer, as well as a 20% reduction for directors. And that will affect both fixed and uh, supplementary remuneration. Now, this measure will apply on a temporary basis uh, for the duration of the crisis. Additionally, the allocation of performance shares uh, to the company's executives in Press for 2020 um, will be suspended into July. Uh, that, of course, is something that will be submitted to the meeting for approval. And uh, it will be reviewed in the light of how the crisis evolves. Despite the difficulties, I'm convinced that we will emerge stronger from this crisis. Ferrovial has a liquidity position close to 6,000 million euros and a net cash position of approximately um, 1.6 billion euros. So that the debt maturities due in 2020, totaling uh, 1,017 million euros, are fully covered. The company also has a portfolio of sound assets. Nevertheless, we still need to be very prudent with regard to traffic protections, as well as uh, the impact of COVID-19 on uh, traffic, on airports uh, and infrastructures and the suspension of contracts. The pandemic has also affected stock markets, uh, and uh, we have not been an exception. Revenues from continuing operations uh, in 2019, uh, rose by 5.5 percent to 6,054 million euros. EBITDA amounted to 121 million euros, uh, affected by a provision that was uh, booked in the first quarter of 2019 to cover possible losses on some of our construction contracts in the USA. Net profit from continuing operations amounted to 457 million euros, the same figure as the previous year, while total net profit, including profit from discontinued operations, stood at 268 million euros. That contrasts with the loss of 448 million euros the previous year. Our financial situation, our net cash position, including infrastructure projects, including the portion corresponding to services, ended 2019 at 1,631 million euros, 32% up on the previous year, while consolidated net debt uh, dropped by 19% to 2,957 million euros. As I mentioned uh, earlier on in this uh, presentation, 
2019 was an excellent year in terms of dividends from our assets. As a result, operating cash flow increased by 44% to 810 million euros. In total, our toll roads generated 494 million euros in dividends, our airports provided 183 million euros, construction activities provided 132 million euros in operating cash flow and services 77 million euros. As I mentioned earlier, uh, in one highlight is the 309 million euros from the 407 ETR, the 166 million euros from the first dividend issued by NTE, and the 145 million euros from Heathrow. Investments amounted 295 million euros and divestments to 484 million euros. Notably, due to the partial sale of the Ausol toll roads in Spain and uh, the Ruta del Cacao in Colombia, these divestments are a continuation of our policy of rotating mature assets, uh, a policy that enables us to extract the maximum value from our investment. Uh, the sale of road spectrum was also agreed on and booked in 2019, but it will not be reflected in cash 2020 once it's been completed. The backlog in 2019 stood at 29,080 million euros. Now, of this amount, 11,424 million were accounted for by construction. That's uh, at 4.2% year on year. 88% of that figure is located outside Spain. The services backlog was 17,656 million euros. Following the uh, proportionate consolidation process, the equity accounting method, 83% of revenues and 84% of EBITDA came from international business. Once again, following the same method, the United States and Canada are our main source of revenues. They contributed uh, 2 billion euros, that's 33% of the total in proportional consolidation terms. Sources of funding. Fer Ferrovial has a diversified funding structure. During 2019, $1.3 billion of debt uh, at NTE were refinanced. Now that reduced the cost of the debt. Uh, the, um, from 5.3% uh, to 3.8% and also extended the maturity in 2019. We also achieved the financial close uh, of, of a couple of projects, the NTE 35W3C project in Texas and Silvertown in London. The 407 highway also made two bond issues amounting to 300 million and 500 million Canadian dollars. The coupons in this case uh, were 3.14% and 3.67% respectively. With regard to our credit rating, Standard Poor's and Fitch maintain Ferrovial's corporate debt in investment grade with a triple B rating. 2019 was a great year for all Ferrovial shareholders if we consider the shares per performance. Ferrovial was one of the best performers in the IBEX 35. Uh, it, uh, with its uh, share price appreciating by 52% to 26.97 euros per share. That's uh, a, a figure, that 52% increase, uh, compares favorably to uh, the average for the Spanish index, which was 12%. Factoring in share buybacks, uh, that brings total shareholder return to 57.2%. The company ended 2019 with a market capitalization of uh, close to 20 billion euros. The COVID-19 pandemic uh, was uh, made a negative impact uh, on stock market the elements of 2020, and we were not an exception. So far in 2020, Ferrovial Fer share has fallen by 13.6%, again better than the IBEX 35, which fell by 29.2%. Uh, that means uh, that we have uh, 17 billion euros in market cap. That was the figure from yesterday's close. Shareholder remuneration amounted to 
520 million euros in 2019, the same as in 2018. That figure includes uh, the 238 million euro script dividends and share buybacks totaling 282 million euros. As you know, among the proposed resolutions to be presented to you today at this meeting, there is the approval of a flexible dividend programme similar to those that uh, have been implemented in the last six years. And this will be implemented through two capital increases to distribute bonus shares. The, with the, the, the sum total of uh, the proposed buyback actions will take the total shareholders return to 550 million euros. Now, this uh, proposal will take place through two couple increases that will be charged to reserves uh, and a subsequent uh, amortisation of uh, treasury stock that will be acquired in a buyback pro programme. We have the understanding that the company has the necessary funds to cover these payments while maintaining a financial position that enables it to invest in the business and create value for shareholders. However, at this time, it is impossible to ignore the uncertainty about the timeline for overcoming the pandemic and the subsequent economic recovery and therefore about how this may affect our projected revenues and cash flow. I should note that for you, shareholders, uh, that the circumstances giving rise to these proposals uh, originally may have changed by the time they are to be implemented. And if that is the case, the board has the option not to execute one or both resolutions or, uh, or to ask you to revoke that approval, all in the terms provided in Section 10 of the capital increase proposals. Uh, and it could also uh, terminate early that... Um, buyback program uh, amortization proposal uh, as uh, permitted by the proposal to the uh, this meeting in item 8 on the agenda. As you know, in October last year, we appointed Ignacio Madrejos as CEO. Now, he will be addressing you in a few minutes' time. He has the full support of the board, and I hope he also has your support to achieve the greatest possible success leading this company. The process of renewing the composition of the Board of Directors also continued in 2019 with the appointment of two new independent directors, Juan Hoyos and Gonzalo Uquijo. Both of these appointments, uh, which have to be ratified today at this meeting, strengthen the presence on the Board of independent directors, uh, who now account for two-thirds of the total number of directors on the Board. The changes in the Board have also made it possible for all members of the Audit and Control Committee and all members of the Appointments and Remuneration Committee to be independent directors. During this uh, general shareholders meeting, you will also be asked to approve uh, the appointment of Ursula Young as auditors uh, for the period 2020 to 2022. And lastly, a new Chief Compliance and Risk Officer was appointed in 2019 reporting to the Audit and Control Committee. Turning to corporate social responsibility, last year Ferrovial was selected by the Dow Jones Sustainability Index as the world's most sustainable company in our industry. Now that ratified our endeavours to ensure the sustainability of our business activities uh, and also their contribution to society. Furthermore, Ferrovial also continues to be included in international sustainability indices such as the MSCI, FTSE for Good, Carbon Disclosure Project, and Vigio. Our social infrastructure program has, is also an ongoing source of good news. It's managed to bring water and sanitation to more than 223,000 people in Africa and Latin America. And lastly, in the operational area, Progress has been made in the commitment to achieve a safe and healthy work environment for all workers at all times. Thanks to everyone's efforts, the accident frequency rate decreased by 15.6% compared to 2018, although 2019 was a particularly tragic year as 14 workers lost their lives. Improving on these figures is one of our top priorities. In 2019... Several 
for Revial projects were recognized for their innovative nature or their excellence. These are awards that acknowledge the company's leadership in engineering, in worker protection, in environmental commitment, and in uh, infrastructure accessibility. To conclude, in 2020, Ferrovial faces the challenge of the greatest global pandemic that uh, humanity has experienced in the last 100 years. However, our company has world-class assets, a great team of professionals, sound numbers, the right level of liquidity, and the ability to overcome the crisis and address the future with determination and optimism. Nevertheless, at this time, I would like to insist that we must move with great caution, as it is very difficult to project the pace at which traffic and construction projects will return to normality. In the meantime, we will do our best to build the Ferroviol of tomorrow, a company committed with a world on the move. In concluding, on behalf of the Board of Directors, I want to thank you, the shareholders, and also our customers and suppliers for your trust in our company. I would also like to send a message of encouragement to all Ferrovial workers. We are going to overcome this crisis. Thank you for your day-to-day -day contribution to Ferrovial by continuing to build a more connected and sustainable future. Thank you very much. A continuación, don Oscar Fanjul, presidente de la Comisión and now the chairman of the audit and control committee will report on the main activities of his of this committee during the year 2019 i'm going to give the floor to mr fanghol thank you very much chairman good morning ladies and gentlemen i am addressing you as uh, chairman of the audit and control committee of ferrovial sa which as you know is the board committee that is in charge of supervising financial statements, control systems, and the group's risks, as well as various aspects of the group's corporate governance. The committee is currently made up of four members, all of whom are independent directors. The committee, in its activities and operations, follows the recommendations of the CNMV's practical guidelines on audit committees of for public interest companies. Let me now sum up the most relevant activities we've carried out in 2019. In any case, the activities of the committee are described in detail in the report produced by the committee and approved by the board of directors that has been made available to shareholders by uh, being posted on the company's website. The committee has reviewed and issued favorable opinions on the financial statements before they are presented to the board and then sent to the authorities and the markets. In that endeavor, we've had the cooperation of the external auditor who's attended the five meetings we've held in the year. The company's auditor has reported on their limited review of the financial statements for the half year ending on June 30th, 2019, and the audit of the financial statements uh, for the year closed on December 30th, issuing a fully favorable opinion. On the other hand, the external auditor has focused on the following aspects in order to make sure that their work would contribute to guaranteeing the integrity of our financial statements has reported to the committee on their working plan for audits in the year, has reviewed the main opinions and estimations that can have an impact on said financial statements, has reported to the committee on the main risk areas that could have an effect on the reliability of our financial statements, has uh, listed the main recommendations uh, for internal control that have emerged from the audit and has also informed on follow-up on the ones that were recommended the previous year, has met all the requirements for independence with the necessary declaration by the law, analyzing all the other tasks other than the legal audit that were entrusted to them. As well as meetings with management, the auditor has had sufficient time to inform 
the committee without the, corp the company's executives being present. And finally, and complying with best practices, have also reported to the board on the work done and the evolution of the company's accounts and risks. The committee has also assessed the services provided by the auditor in the last five years in compliance with the board's regulations. Also, the company's management has reported to the committee on the operations of the internal control system for financial data and on the work done in order to improve controls in the different group areas. We have monitored progress based on the improvements and recommendations that were made the previous year. The committee has also had the full support of the Internal Audit Division. We have supervised their activities during 2019 and approved the Internal Audit Plan for the year 2020. We've also received, during the previous year, two reports of the Internal Audit Department on the functioning of Ferrovial's ethical channel, which is a channel that enables Ferrovial's employees or any third parties to act as whistleblowers for any um, inadequate behaviors or activities. The committee has also been informed periodically on the company's main risks and contingencies, as well as the groups, and along the systems have been that have been established for identifying, managing, and controlling said risks. Finally, and in connection with our activities in the area of corporate governance and compliance, the committee examined before it was presented to the board the annual corporate governance report, so supervised the operation and efficacy of Ferrovial's compliance model, and produced a report on related transactions published on the company's website. These have, in summary, been all the tasks that we've carried out during the year that ended December 31st, 2019. And now, on behalf of the Audit and Control Committee, I'd like to thank Mr. Fernandez Balbuena, who has chaired this committee for the last four years and who's had to be replaced as chairman because that's uh, what the regulations require for the excellence of his work as chairman of said committee. Again, on behalf of the Audit and Control Committee, I'd like to thank you for your attention. Good morning. And now uh, we are going to give the floor to Mr. Ignacio Madridejos, who will also say a few words. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, shareholders. Good, uh, good morning, everyone. It's a real pleasure to participate in my very first ordinary general meeting to present the 2019 results and I'd like to of course remember all those whom we have lost during this COVID-19 pandemic and extend my deepest condolences to their relatives and friends. I'd also like to thank all our medical or health professionals who are doing critical work. I'd like to mention our Ferrovial colleagues who work uh, in ambulance services, cleaning hospitals, building field hospitals, and maintaining transport infrastructures. We're very, very proud of you. I'd also like to remember all those who've suffered job-related accidents. Although we've reduced the frequency of said accidents with uh, leaves 15.6%, we still are working hard so that everyone connected to us can return safely home after their day at work. As for our financial results, 2019 was a good year. We have excellent infrastructure assets that demonstrate our strength with excellent operating profit and which have enabled us to maintain high liquidity. Our Toll road and airport assets in general have seen an increase in traffic in the year 2019, improving their profitability and customer satisfaction levels and bringing in 729 million euros in dividends. In construction, it was a difficult year with a provisions of 345 million in the first quarter for projects in the US, but that was offset by a positive activity uh, flow at the end of the year and the implementation of different actions so as to reach an EBIT of 3.5% in by 2024. In services, we have reached an agreement for the broad spectrum divestment and we maintain our commitment to continue to sell all other service division assets when markets 
allow. As usual, sustainability and innovation are an essential part of our strategy and help contribute to our profit. I'd also like to, as usual, thank all of Ferrovial's work, workers for the efforts they've made. They are the key in order to achieve our targets. At the end of January, we presented our strategy 2020-2024, which we've called Horizon 24, focused on the development and operation of innovative infrastructures, efficient and sustainable, in our eight strategic markets principally. I hope that this plan will position Ferrovial at the forefront of infrastructure businesses, as well as our core businesses of toll roads, airports, and construction linked to the development of infrastructure projects with high concession value. We're also going to explore other businesses, including mobility, electrification, and water, linked to infrastructure development. In this plan, we've also defined some targets, such as an annual EBITDA growth of 11% between 2020 and 2024, dividends of 4 billion in our infrastructure assets, an EBIT margin of 3.5% from construction in 2024, and a reduction of our total absolute CO2 emissions of 32% in 2030 with respect to 2009 levels. We have a solid backlog of infrastructure projects that we're studying for a total of 12 billion euros, and we will continue with the rotation of mature assets and the complete divestment of our service business. Also, we're going to be a more agile, innovative and efficient company with a new operating model which will enable us to save 50 million in structural costs. And all of this while maintaining a clear focus on shareholder return. A strategy which was, of course, uh, drafted before the COVID-19 crisis, which may have a, relative, a relevant impact on our economy, generating challenges but also opportunities with regards to the plans that I have just discussed. Moving on to our main financial highlights of 2019, our turnover rose by 5.5% to a total of 6.05 billion euros. Our gross margin was 121 million euros impacted by those construction provisions in the first quarter of the year. Our net operating income was 401 million, profiting from the capital gains for the OSOL divestment, and the net profit, including services, was 268 million versus a negative figure in the previous year. As for an M&A activity, at the end of last year, we signed an agreement for the broad spectrum divestment. Our stake was valued at 300 million. We hope that the sale will be completed before Q3 this year. We've also confirmed our commitment for the full divestment of the service division when market conditions allow. Last year, we also rotated a mature asset, which was our sol, by selling 65% of it for 451 million generated a significant capital gain. We also sold 11.75% of Ruta del Cacao for 28.6 million and the Polish uh, service business for 24 million euros. Our turnover was again 6.05 billion euros, 89% of that from the construction business and 10% from toll roads. Our Gross margin was 121 million, 436 million from toll roads, but negative 286 million in construction due to those provisions for the construction projects in the US. By countries, 33% of our turnover came from the US and Canada, 30% from Poland, 17% from Spain, 7% from the UK, and 13% from others. As for gross margin, Spain contributed 205 million, Poland 110 million, while the rest was negative, especially the US and Canada, with minus 129 million as a result of that construction provision that I mentioned before. Our turnover with the proportional integration method added up to 6.243 billion, 68% of that from the construction business and 16% from highways and airports. The that was 1.044 billion. That's 742 million from highways, 587 million from airports, but negative 257 million from construction, due to the reasons that I have mentioned above. With the proportional integration method by countries, 32% of our turnover was in the U.S. and Canada, 23% in the U.K., 17% in Spain, 16% in Poland, and 12% in others. Five countries represent almost 90% of our turnover. And as for our, the UK, again, was 55% of the 1.04 billion, the US and Canada 20%, Spain 16%, and Poland 6%.
2019 was a good year for cash flow generation with significant dividends paid by our infrastructure assets as well as the construction and services contribution. Our operational cash flow was 810 million. Highway dividends with 494 million was 56% of the total. Airports, 183 million euros, 20% of the total. Construction had a positive operational cash flow of 132 million euros and services a negative 77 million and others, no, services positive 77 million but others minus 76 million. Our net cash position was of 1.6 billion euros, that's 400 million more than the previous year, which puts us in a very solid position to face challenges such as the COVID-19 crisis. Shareholder return, including dividend and share buybacks, was 520 million. And total shareholder return, considering dividend plus the valuation of the shares, 57.2%, because shares rose in the year, bringing us to a market cap of 19.8 billion euros, that's 6.76 billion more than the previous year. However, for, of course, with the effects of the current pandemic, our shares have been impacted and our market caps is now down to 17 billion 131. In the year, we've had significant awards, new projects, including the I-35 in Waco, Texas, or the award of a, the, for the construction of a road in Gran Canaria. In services, we've also been awarded relevant contracts such as road maintenance in Ottawa and New York. Again, Heathrow has been recognized this year as the best European airport and the best airport for shopping in the world. In 2019, we've also been awarded the concession and the construction of the Silvertown Tunnel and the 3C segment of the 35W. We've refinanced the NTE highway, which has paid its first dividend, and we've sold Ausol and Ruta del Cacao, as I mentioned before, and have opened a new highway in Toowoomba, Australia, and in the 177, a new managed lane in Charlotte, North Carolina. Moving on in more detail to the highway uh, business, our assets had a good year with good traffic performance, constant in the 407, but up in the NTE 14.7%, in the LBJ 9.1%, and the 35W 25.3%, this latter in the fourth quarter of the year. We've also had good increases in our beta with which is up 8.1% in the 407, 32.6% in the NTE, and 23.7% in the LBJ. And we've also maintained good customer satisfaction, 87% in the 407. As I mentioned, we've opened the I-77 to Woomba and phase two of the 407 East extension. We've also completed the financial closing of the 35W3C for $900 million and the Silvertown Tunnel for a billion pounds as well as the refinancing of the NTE for $1.3 billion. Our dividends from highways were 494 million euros last year, 309 from the 407, 166 million from the NTE, which paid its first dividend. And we hope that this year the LBJ will be paying its first dividend, the um, current health crisis allowing. Of course, last year we also rotated the uh, Sol and Ruta del Cacao assets that I mentioned before with capital gains of 474 million for our Sol and 9 million euros for Ruta del Cacao. Revenues from uh, our Toros totaled 617 million euros last year. That's 31% up on the previous year. EBITDA totaled 433 million euros. Uh, that's 35.7% uh, higher than the figure from the previous years. And dividends, as I mentioned to you earlier, totaled 494 million euros. Turning to geographies, and once again by proportional integration, 43% uh, uh, of the revenues from our toll roads uh, came from Canada, 21% uh, USA, 20% Spain, and 7% Portugal. Let me move on to our airports uh, business. Uh, our airports assets also had a very good year last year in 2019. Heathrow last year 
uh, hit a new uh, passenger record figure, 80.9 million uh, passengers. That's 1% up on the previous year. And that, that means that we have uh, seen consecutive nine consecutive years of growth in those figures. Dividend received from ARG stake in Heathrow, total 145 million euros. 82% of all of the users of Heathrow effort rated the experience as excellent or very good. Uh, the British uh, Court of Appeal decided uh, that uh, the process for the approval of the third runway should include uh, the Paris Climate Change uh, Agreement, and that decision uh, is one that we are asking for permission from the Supreme Court uh, to appeal against, and that could also uh, have uh, an effect on the delay on the expansion project for the third runway. AGS, British Airports, uh, traffic uh, dropped last year by 7.8%. Um, some of the reasons for that included uh, Thomas Cook uh, bankruptcy and also a drop in our revenues uh, um, despite that drop, rather, revenues increased uh, by 1.8 percent. Our dividends were 70 million euros. In the case of Heathrow, uh, sales revenues uh, totaled 3.07 uh, billion uh, pounds, 3.3 percent higher than the previous year. EBITDA 1.92 billion pounds, 4.5 percent up, uh, and total dividends of 500 million euros. AGS uh, revenues 217 million pounds. A bit to 94 million, and that was 2.6 percent down total dividends, 30 million pounds. Turning to construction, revenues uh, in the construction business rose by 3.1% in 2019, although the, the Avito figure was affected by provisions for losses for, for the toll road works in the USA. Nevertheless, we finished the year with positive activity flow. In our Horizon 24 business plan uh, that we've already talked to you about, we do hope to have positive EBIT in 2020, although it would depend, of course, on the time it takes for us to overcome the COVID-19 pandemic and the dis different geographies where we're doing business uh, and uh, what uh, compensation we get for the different works. Nevertheless, our aim is to, to hit 3.5% uh, as uh, a figure for EBIT uh, in by 2024. But we're working uh, on uh, the improvement of our key processes, uh, so, such as uh, the tendering and control of our works, together with other measures that are already proving to be successful last year. The key uh, awards, uh, 3C section of the 35W, uh, Fort Worth, also the I-35, uh, going through Waco, the Silverton Tunnel, and, and work in ports and railways in Poland. Construction revenues last year, total 5.413 million. We have also a recent um, project uh, that was announced last year. As I said, construction sales last year, 5.41 billion euros, that's 3.1 percent up on the previous year, EBIT down 365 million euros, uh, and operational uh, flow 132 million euros, that's cash flow. Turning to the geographies uh, breakdown, uh, the key market was Poland, uh, representing 34 uh, percent, USA, Canada 30 percent, Spain 15 percent, and the UK 7 percent. Our backlog uh, has hit uh, an all-time high of 11.42 billion uh, euros. That's 4.2% above the figure for the previous year. The bulk of that is in the USA and Canada. Those countries represent 45%, followed by Poland, uh, that's 25%, Spain 12%, and the UK 8%. Let me move on to the services business now. We're still committed uh, to... Uh, the divestment of this division, although the current crisis might, of course, uh, uh, delay the sale process until stability comes back to the markets. Last year, we sold the services division in Poland to Budimex, and we reached an agreement for the, sea for the sale of broad spectrum for uh, the value of our stakes, the 300 million euros, which we hope to close by the third quarter of this year. Our revenues uh, grew by 4.3% in like-for-like -like terms. And our EBIT was 309 million euros, 5.3% up in Spain, 26.3% up in our international business. Turning to uh, safety once again, uh, our accident frequency uh, rate uh, was 15% better. We were awarded uh, key contracts in all of the markets, uh, such as defence contracts in the UK, Sydney Water in Australia, and uh, highway contracts in Canada. The results for services, revenues, uh, 6.99 billion euros, 2.1% up for on the previous year. EBITDA was 309 million euros. Uh, our operational cash flow was 77 million euros, including the payment of 160 million pounds following the agreement with uh, Birmingham City Council. 
sale for geog by geography breakdown. 39% UK, 29% Spain, 24% Australia and New Zealand. The total backlog was 17.65 uh, um, billion euros, 46% in UK, 24% Spain, 23% in Australia and New Zealand. Let me move on to new businesses. Uh, the mobility business uh, is providing us with some key information to develop some new transport infrastructures. Uh, mobility, first of all, we have two key initiatives. One is Zitty, that's the car sharing business we have with Renault in Madrid, and we're also expanding that to other European cities, starting with Paris. We, the other one is Wanda, which is a mobility platform we have in Spain. In electrification, uh, we are seeking to develop some uh, greenfield projects uh, for transmission lines, especially in Latin American countries where we've uh, define them as priority. And once they're built, we will rotate uh, the assets as quickly as possible. In water, we are taking advantage uh, of uh, our construction capabilities in the countries uh, which we have defined as priority countries to develop our new infrastructure concessions. Let me talk about sustainability now. Combating climate change uh, is something that plays a relevant role in Ferrovial's strategy both to reduce uh, our emissions uh, that uh, come from our business activity as well as to look for more sustainable infrastructure and mobility solutions. Uh, our scope one and scope two uh, carbon emission footprint uh, in 2019 was 861,000 tonnes of CO2. That's down 5.2% compared to the previous year. And compared with uh, the benchmark year of 2009, in absolute terms, it's a reduction of 19.5% and in intensity 59% down so it's, it's down below uh, the uh, game that was defined for 2020, uh, a reduction of 35.4% in emission intensity. We've also defined a new goal for 2030, which means that reducing by 32% uh, in absolute terms our scope 1 and 2 emissions compared to 2009. To be able to hit that goal, we will have to reduce our emissions from our vehicle fleet by 33%. We'll have to ensure that all of our energy uh, supply is 100% renewable energy by 2025 and we'll have to improve our, our energy efficiency from uh, other fixed sources by 30% by that year. All of uh, the audited emission data uh, such as the O2 reduction plan up to 2013 are available to you on our website. We're still working on new initiatives that will help us uh, to become carbon neutral before 2015. Uh, and we'll need to develop new technologies to do that. Uh, corporate social responsibility. We launched uh, our 20.22 uh, 20, 20, 20 plan uh, with initiatives to implement over the next three years. These initiatives are aligned with our compliance with the SDGs, especially those that are most relevant to our strategy. We're continuing with initiatives such as the Junta Sumamos initiative, developing uh, water and sanitation uh, programs in those areas where there is a real need for them. We're also participating in the the key sustainability indices that will allow us to benchmark our programs. And we're very proud of being uh, the leading companies in our industry in the Dow Jones Sustainable Index. Health and safety, we regret uh, uh, the loss of life of 14 uh, workers uh, and last year employees uh, and contractor workers. But we have to reduce the total number of safety incidents, starting with the, 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 the severest ones. We are intensifying our endeavours uh, in those that we call hypertensional, and uh, we're learning for them and extending out our best practices, all of the company, the whole company, and I myself personally, we're all committed to the health and safety of uh, the people who work with us, so we want all of our workers to go home safe and sound at the end of their working day. Let me talk to you about the priorities for this year, 2020. In our strategy, Horizon 24, in that plan, we define four strategic priorities. The first one, is uh, about the people who make up our company, our key assets. We have to ensure the safety of every single person working in this company. And uh, that is even uh, more important now due to the pandemic uh, that uh, we are facing. We also have to ensure that we have a good uh, employment uh, environment for these people and show that we are committed and we have to be able to bring in the top talent from the communities where we are. Secondly, Sustainable growth, uh, we have to develop and operate uh, high concessional value infrastructure assets in our priority markets, rotating our mature assets uh, or, or those that don't actually fit into our strategy, uh, such as services, and always seeking excellence uh, in our shareholder return. 
The third strategic priority is operational excellence. We have to improve our, our construction margins through the redesigning of key processes, implementing a new operational model to, to make the company more agile, efficient, and innovative, and reducing our environmental impact, especially CO2 emissions. The fourth strategic priority is innovation. It must be disruptive uh, within the company itself. It must be incremental to the business users and always uh, with sponsors uh, and return on investments. These priorities um, have been um, turned into uh, indicators with, defi with uh, defined objectives in our Horizon 24 plan. Or some of those are, are for an annual improvement of 10% in the, this severe and uh, fatal accident index, a reduction of 32% in absolute emissions in scope 1 and 2 in 2030, be the leading con company in the industry in measured in TSR terms. So the growth over the next four years of 11% annually of EBITDA, uh, reaching 3.5% EBIT margin construction by 2024, or reducing this year by 20 million euros our structural costs, and that will give us an annualized reduction of 50 million by, as of 2021. Um, and question B, 2020 is a year that uh, has been characterised by the impact of COVID-19 in, in Peruvia. We're working to reduce its impact and to respond uh, with and to respond to any of the worst possible scenarios. We're getting ready to come out of the crisis strengthened on the 25th of March. Uh, we issued uh, a communique and we gave information about the impact on traffic uh, our, in our key assets, about the activity of our key businesses uh, and the financial situation of our infrastructure assets. Traffic figures started the year with uh, values that were higher than the previous year, but of course uh, they they fell off uh, quite substantially, and uh, this uh, drop uh, was increased in, in March. Uh, the 407 saw traffic uh, falls of minus 12.7 percent in the first quarter, minus 37.8 percent in March, minus 76.4 percent the last week of March. Measure the last uh, uh, the same figures for the previous years and similar figures for LB, LBJ. Um, that's minus 30.6 Q1, minus 30% March, minus 70.3% the last week, and for the NTE, 7.7%, minus 31.1%, uh, minus 61, 6, 67%, uh, and the same for 35W. In the case of Heathrow, the fall off in the first quarter was minus 18.3% in March, minus 52.4%, and AGS British uh, Airports, minus 23.9% in the first quarter, minus 57.3% in March in construction services. We've had uh, temporary... Uh, suspension of uh, some of our projects in some countries, uh, and here I would like to uh, uh, highlight uh, the work has been done by some of our colleagues uh, in critical works. In our liquidity position is strong, and our our key uh, infrastructure assets uh, are have a good financial position, and will and that will allow us uh, to uh, cover our debt without any problems and to be strengthened when we come through this crisis. This. Uh, sound financial position together with our unique infrastructure assets, uh, the right strategy in our Horizon 24 plan, a great human team, allow us to continue to generate value for our shareholders. Let me finish by thanking our shareholders for the trust you, that you have given us and our employers for the work done during the whole year. Thank you very much. Uh, those shareholders who have uh, registered in the platform uh, on Ferrovial's website and have logged in to attend the meeting in accordance with the provisions of the notice of call, have been able to send any uh, comments or request information or clarification on one, items included on the agenda, two, information available to the general public provided by the company to the CNMV since the last general shareholders meeting was held, or three, the auditor's report. On the other hand, in case that requests for information or clarification on these matters made by proxies attending remotely exist, they would be answered within the seven days following the holding of this meeting in accordance with Article 197.2 of the Capital Companies Act. In addition, and in accordance with Articles 197 and 520 of said Act, Shareholders have had the opportunity to request clarifications and ask any questions they might have in writing regarding these same matters up to the fifth day prior to this general shareholders meeting. 
we have had no requests for statements or clarification by shareholders attending remotely, so we will now read and approve the items on the agenda. We will review first the items for approval. I call on the Secretary who will explain some practical aspects and read the proposed resolutions on the agenda published so we can proceed separately to their vote. <clears throat> procedure for the reading and the approval shall be as follows. In accordance with Article 24.1 of the regulations of the General Shareholders Meeting, and given that shareholders have the text of the proposed resolutions at their disposal on the company's website, a summary of the contents will be read of those whose full reading is not required due to their length. The chairman will then decide, well, will then speak on their approval. Accordance with Article 24.4 of the Regulations of the General Shareholders Meeting, any shareholder who is not voted against in cast a blank vote or expressly stated their abstention through any of the remote communication means enabled by the company and described in the call and the supplementary announcement shall be deemed to vote in favour of the proposed resolution. Provided that, after the vote corresponding to each item on the agenda, there is evidence that there are enough votes for an agreement to be approved, this shall be deemed as approved. The exact numbers of the votes for, against, abstentions and blanks should be duly indicated in the minutes of the General Shareholders Meeting. Furthermore, the adopted agreements and voting results should be published on Ferrovial's website. I will remind you that shareholders attending remotely may cast their vote until the last of the items submitted for voting at the meeting is read. Item 1 on the agenda. The point is divided into two sections since mercantile regulations require separate approval of the consolidated non-financial information statement. First item, section one of the agenda, to approve the annual accounts, balance sheet, profit and loss accounts, statements of changes in equity, cash flow statement and report of Ferrovial SA and its consolidated group prepared by the board of directors for the financial year ended December 31st, 2019 and the management reports of Ferrovial SA and its consolidated group prepared by the Board of Directors for the financial year ending December 31st, 2019. Item 1, Section 1 on the agenda is approved. Item 1, Section 2. To approve the consolidated statement of non-financial information for the year ending 31st December 2019, which is part of the management report of the consolidated group Ferrovial SA. Item 1, Section 2 of the agenda is approved. Item 2 of the agenda, to approve the application of the resulting profit from the financial year 2019 amounting to 672,387,541 euros and 14 cents entirely to voluntary reserves. Item 2 on the agenda is approved. Item 3, to approve the management carried out by the Board of Directors during the financial period of 2019. Item 3 on the agenda is approved. Fourth item on the agenda, the content of this proposed agreement is summarised. It is proposed that Ernst & Young SL be appointed as the auditor for Ferrovial SA and its consolidated group of companies for the years 2020 to 2022. Item 4 on the agenda is approved. Fifth is divided into five sections, which allow separate voting on resolutions relating to the composition of the company's board of directors, thus complying with mercantile regulations. Fifth, section one, to re-elect the director, Mr. Philip Bauman, as member of the board of directors with the category of independent director for the statutory period of three years from the date of this agreement. Fifth, section one on the agenda is approved. Fifth, Section 2, to re-elect as Director of the Board in the category of Independent Director, Director Mrs. Hanne Brigitte Breinberg Sorensen from the, for the statutory period of three years from the date of this agreement. Fifth, Section 2 on the agenda is approved. Fifth, Section 3, to confirm the appointment of Mr. Ignacio Madridejos Fernandez as Director with the category of Executive Director made by the Board of Directors by co-option in its meeting of September 30th, 2019, and to appoint him as director with the same category for the statutory period of three years from the date of this agreement. 
Fifth, Section 3 of the agenda is approved. Fifth, Section 4, to confirm the appointment of the designation of Mr. Juan Ollos Martinez de Rujo's director, with the category of independent director, appointed by the Board of Directors by co option its meeting of September 30th, 2019, and to appoint him as director with the same category for the statutory period of three years starting from the date of this agreement. Fifth, Section 4 on the agenda is approved. Fifth, Section 5, to confirm the nomination of Mr. Gonzalo Urquijo Fernández de Arauz as director in the category of independent director, appointed by the Board of Directors by co-option in its meeting of December 19, 2019, to appoint him as director with the same category for the statutory period of three years from the date of this agreement. Fifth, Section 5 on the agenda is approved. Item 6 on the agenda. I'm going to summarize the content of this proposal to approve a capital increase charged to reserves for the amount resulting from multiplying the nominal value of 20 cents per share of Ferrovial SA by the total number of new shares to be issued. The provisional number of shares to be issued will be equal to the amount of the alternative option divided by the quoted price of Ferrovial's share in their five trading sessions prior to the day on which the resolution to execute the capital increase is adopted. The amount of the alternative option is the market value of the capital increase and is set at €234,220,538.24. Each share in circulation shall grant one free of charge allocation right. These rights may be traded in the market during the period determined by the Board of Directors with a minimum of 15 calendar days. The number of free of charge allocation rights or existing shares needed to obtain one new share shall be equal to the number of shares in circulation divided by the provisional number of shares to be issued. The price that Ferrovial undertakes to pay for each free of charge allocation right will be equal to the quoted price of Ferrovial's share in the five trading sessions prior to the day on which the resolution to carry out the capital increase is adopted, divided by the number of rights required for a new share. A capital increase will be without effect if the Board does not implement it within one year from its approval by this general shareholders meeting, and shareholders must be informed thereof at the next general shareholders meeting held thereafter. The board may also submit to the general shareholders meeting the possibility of revoking the capital increase. The chairman has indicated in his speech that the board will assess the situation of the company in the concurrent circumstances and will decide whether to execute this capital increase and the one proposed in the following item on the agenda. Well, punto six. Item 6 on the agenda is duly approved. Item 7. Now, this proposed resolution is analogous to the previous item. In this case, the amount of the alternative option is to be set by the Board of Directors, depending on the number of shares in circulation and the remuneration paid and expected to, to the shareholders charged the financial year 2020, so uh, up to that time. And it cannot exceed 316,603,508 uh, euros and 90 euro cents. This capital increase may be cancelled or revoked in the same way as the previous one. Item 7 on the agenda is approved. Item 8. Let me summarise the content of this uh, proposal. To reduce the share capital by amortisation of the sum of the nominal value of, uh, firstly, uh, 2,275,160 shares uh, of 20 cents uh, of a euro that the company has as treasury stocks and two shares of 20 cents of a euro that are acquired through a buyback program that will be targeted at all shareholders uh, and approved by the board and directors. The final figure of that reduction shall be set depending on the final number of shares acquired in the buyback program. Now, this buyback program um, shall be subject to two quantitative limits. One, the maximum investment will be 360 million euros. And two, in no case may the number of shares to be acquired exceed uh, 25 million shares, representing 3.4% of the company's share capital at the date of this proposed resolution. The program will be maintained uh, up until 4th of de December 2020 without prejudice to the possibility of, of terminating it earlier when it has fulfilled its purpose or when other circumstances arises that makes it advisable to terminate it, the Treasury shares acquired by the company under the buyback program must be amortised within the month following its termination. The capital reduction must be carried out within this period and in any event within the year following the date this agreement was adopted. Item 8 on the agenda is approved. Item 9. 
to approve in accordance with the provisions of Article 529 Nova Decisa of the Capital Companies Act, the Director's Remuneration Policy of Ferrovial SA for the years 2020, 2021 and 2022. The remuneration policy shall be effective and shall supersede the policy currently in effect as of the date of this agreement and shall remain in effect until the third anniversary of that date. The text of the policy, together with the mandatory report from the Nominations and Remuneration uh, Committee, has been made available to shareholders since the date of the call to this general shareholders meeting. Item 9 on the agenda is approved. Item 10. Let me summarise the content of this uh, proposed agreement. A plan to deliver shares of Ferrovial SA addressed to executive directors submitted for your approval. It consists of allocating to beneficiaries a number of units that will, be, that will serve as a basis for determining the final number of shares they may receive. That Now the plan is valid for three years. The total number of shares that may be granted annually under this plan may not exceed 175,000 shares representing 0.024% of the company's share capital. As a condition for the delivery of the shares, it is required Firstly, to remain in the company for a period of three years, uh, that's the maturity period, uh, from the date of allocation of the units. And uh, two, to comply during this maturity pre period with certain ratios calculated on the basis of the activity cash flow and the total shareholder return in relation to a uh, comparison group. Item 10 on the agenda is approved. Item 11 on the agenda. In development of the authorization agreed by the, the uh, Ordinary General Shareholders Meeting of 5th of April 2019, the Board of Directors is authorised to continue the process of divestment of the services division of the Ferrovial Group and consequently of the companies that comprise it. Thus, the sale of the remaining business may be carried out in one or several operations and may affect all the assets that make up the business or only part of them. The Board of Directors, uh, on the basis of the market situation and the interest shown by potential acquirers, will determine the method of um, proceeding that it considers most convenient for the interests of Ferrovial and its shareholders, subject to the following rules. A. The divestment process, whether total or partial, and understanding partial to mean not the entire services division, but one or more of its uh, large units for geographical reasons or by business line must be competitive and led by a financial advisor of recognised prestige. B. However, when, in the opinion of the Board, it is appropriate, the partial divestment may not be structured as a competitive process and or may not be entrusted to the management of a financial advisor in accordance with the above rule, in which case the price or consideration must be backed by a report from a specialised um, entity of recognised prestige that would state that such consideration is fair to the company from a financial point of view. C. The board may also choose to, di to dispose of all or part of the remaining business of the services division in the context of admission to trading on an exchange or other regulated market or multilateral trading facility of securities representing its ownership. The disposal may be carried out in one or several operations and may affect, in each case, all the remaining assets that make up the services division or only part of them. In, in any of these uh, cases, the corresponding process must be conducted by one or more specialised entities of recognised prestige and the sale price of the securities must be determined through a book building procedure in accordance with the usual practice for maximising the price. D. In any case, and for clarification purposes, it is here by stated that that um, the conditions uh, that they will not be subject to the conditions of of those investment transactions, one of little relative substance, or two referring to specific project assets, or three that do not represent one of the large units of the service division for geographical reasons or business line. Item 11 on the agenda is approved. Item 12. To summarise, uh, the proposal is to delegate to the Board of Directors with powers to subdelegate to the Executive Committee, the Chairman and the CEO, the power to interpret, correct and execute the resolutions adopted at this general meeting and to delegate to the Chairman, the CEO and the Secretary of the Board so that any of them may formalise and record such agreements uh, in a public document. Item 12 on the agenda is approved. Let's continue with the, the matters on the agenda for an advisory vote uh, and the matters for information. The Secretary will once again take the floor. 
Item 13. To approve the annual report and direct remuneration for the financial year 2019 in an advisory capacity. Item 13 on the agenda is approved. Item 14. A document which records that the amendments uh, to the regulations of the Board of Directors uh, since the date of the above general meeting has been made available to the shareholders. Those amendments were approved at the meeting of the Board of Directors held on 27th of February 2020. Now that we have announced the results of the votes corresponding to each one of the items on the agenda, which will be duly recorded uh, in uh, the notarial minutes uh, and published on the website, the meeting is now adjourned. Uh, we, will thank, we are thanking all of the shareholders for their participation in the meeting through the channels and means that have been um, put in place by the company in these exceptional circumstances. Thank you very much and good afternoon to all of you.